Now we can try working out group C. We have to take a guess as to what's going on there. Um, I think it's going to be uh, carbon attached to, so it's going to be three methyl groups that are attached to adjacent carbon with no hydrogen. How many methyl groups? Or excuse me, two. Mm. That seems right. Six hydrogens are likely to be two methyl groups. Now the other possibility is that it could be three CH2 groups. It could be three CH2 groups, but I think we're starting to run out of carbons now. How many carbons have we already shown here? We've already got six carbons in the ring. We've already got six carbons in the ring. Here's a seventh and an eighth carbon. So I think that we're going to have too many carbons if we try to put in three CH2 groups here as well. So it looks like these really are two methyl groups and not three CH2 groups. Because the CH2 groups would have to be attached to carbons on the other sides as well. So it looks like that was the, the correct interpretation. That these are two methyl groups over here. And this has no hydrogens. And now we have to try to put all these fragments together. We have to put this fragment together with this fragment together with the benzene ring. Uh, but can we also say that that the central carbon it has a chlorine attached to it? Because it's pulled to the right over here? Yeah. That's right. This is to the left of 1.25. So we might think that this has the chlorine. However, that's not, that can't be. Because that wouldn't be consistent with what we got here. We've already put the chlorine on this carbon, and this carbon is full. There's no way that this carbon... And even, and even a chlorine in that close proximity would have some, would have probably more shit than that, wouldn't it? Because it's let's not, see, it's not electronegative uh, carbon. That's a, you know. it's not on the same carbon as the hydrogen. Sure, it's it's only adjacent. But, so, so uh, but it might, it might have more effect than this. I'm not quite sure. We might have to, to look that up. But anyway, I don't think that there's any way this could be the chlorine because then this would also have to have two hydrogens. But there's no room for those two extra hydrogens here. So let's leave that chlorine off and see if we can explain the shift later. So now let's try to put these fragments together. Hmm. Keeping in mind, there's 10 carbons total. So how can we fit all these fragments together? Well, I know this is a carbon here. That's probably going to be a group C that's attached there. Like this? We could call these the group C hydrogens. Or, or uh, on the other side, I would just. So far, so good? Does this make sense so far? OK. Now, this carbon has to be attached to one other thing to get a full octet. Yeah, group B. Well, now we can put in the group B. And now, do we have 10 carbons? Yes. Yeah. yes. So this is our guess. And now we want to see whether we can confirm everything here. Well, let's see. Would everyone here have a singlet? Certainly this would have a singlet because it's not adjacent to any hydrogens. And these would have singlets because they're not adjacent to any hydrogens. I'm not really sure why the benzenes are singlets here because they are adjacent to other hydrogens. But oh, well, I see what's happening here. Now, one thing to notice here is technically, technically these hydrogens are not equivalent to each other. Because after all, this hydrogen is closer to, these car to the bottom. The bottom of this is different from the top. So really, there should be three different groups of hydrogens here. This should be one group, and this should be one group, and this should be one group. However, notice that all of these are a really long way away from the chlorine. So the chlorine actually is going to have very little effect on all of these. This is something we talked about last time. Even though, technically speaking, these should all have different chemical shifts, they're going to be so close to each other that we're not going to be able to distinguish those different peaks. I think that's where we're getting the broad over here. I think in this case, the broad indicates a bunch of jumbled up peaks. Mm -hmm. We're getting the jumbled up peaks from this group, this group, and this group. And I think that's why we're getting that broad indication over there. This is a good example of what I mentioned yesterday. Theoretically, we would have expected three different peaks from the benzene hydrogens. Because this hydrogen is furthest from the chlorine, this is closer to the chlorine, and these are closest to the chlorine. But they're all so far away from the chlorine that they're all pretty much in almost the same exact region, around 7.23. So we can't actually distinguish the different peaks except for some broad peak. And because they're all fairly equivalent to each other, they're not going to be splitting each other. I have a quick question. So say, for instance, that, that benzene ring was just attached to a car adjacent carbon that had the three methyl groups attached to it. Mm -hmm. Would they all be equivalent still? 
Well, they might be so close that they seemed equivalent, but they wouldn't really be equivalent okay. because um, even then there would be a slight difference in, um, in, in their reactivity, but then they would be even closer because the methyl group doesn't have very much effect okay. on things. So the point is, even though theoretically there should be three different groups of hydrogens here, they're all absorbing so close to each other that we can't really see that on the printout except for some broadening. They said this was broad, and they're not going to be expected to split each other because they're so equivalent to each other because they're so similar to each other. Remember, you really only see uh, an important splitting from non-equivalent hydrogens. Well, these are, are so close to being equivalent that we're not getting any splitting there. But we certainly understand why these are singlets, because they're on this carbon that doesn't have any hydrogens on it. Now, let's try to look up where we would expect these hydrogens to absorb on our table. So I think that would be here. 3.6 to 3.8, or actually a little bit to the right of that for some reason, which is not what I would have expected. Uh, but that, that's close enough. That's close enough. So the chlorine is actually at 3.5. Here it's at 3.6 to 3.8. But again, these are not hard and fast regions. So that's close enough. And how about the other CH3 groups, group C? Well, we would normally expect group C to be around here, 0.8 to 1. Actually, this is right here. Uh, no. No, you're right. I'm sorry. Point eight. Yeah, because this is a primary. Here's a primary, 0.8 to 1. Now, this is considerably to the left of 1. That's not too hard to understand because they're getting dragged to the left by this chlorine over here. We were up, at first, we were thinking the chlorine was even closer to here. But we can, uh, now we can, we, we can see this is getting pulled to the left by the chlorine, even though the chlorine is not on the C carbon or even on the adjacent carbon. It's on the carbon that's adjacent to the adjacent carbon. So it's not having as much effect as it, it would if it was closer, but we're still outside the normal range for primary carbons. So everything seems to match up pretty good. We, uh, oftentimes, you can't expect perfection from these tables. They're just rough predictions. So this looks like this is a, a fair interpretation. I don't think there's anything else that would match the data nearly as well here. So this would be a good choice as our answer. Does that make sense? Maybe the most important thing we saw here is how useful that aromatic absorption is between 6.5 and 8. There's really only one type of group that absorbs between 6.5 and 8. Is that where they said the aromatics were? Yeah, 6.5 to 8.5. So when we see an absorption in this region, that's a very strong clue for a benzene ring. And really, this was a strong clue for benzene too. Four degrees of unsaturation should make you start thinking about benzene, because benzene has four degrees of unsaturation, three pi bonds and one ring. Okay. So we're able to account for that as well. And again, we were trying, instead of trying to leap to putting the whole molecule together in one fell swoop, we started by trying to put the various fragments together. And again, you have to notice that it's possible that you might take a guess that's wrong. If you take a guess that doesn't seem to be working, you have to step back and take a different guess until you find something that works.